one of the uh, most um, one of the most important, in my opinion, strategies or investing tools that I know of today and have known of for years is this thing called self-directed IRAs. And I know you're an expert in this area when it comes to um, advising your clients on what a self-directed IRA is, how to take advantage of it. And of course that could easily be a full day seminar conversation, but just take a couple of minutes, tell people what self-directed IRAs are and why it is they might want to consider talking with you about getting one set up if they don't have one set up. Well, so a self-directed IRA is where typically where you have money in, in a 401k and, and another type of retirement account, and you can move that money into an account to where you can manage and do different things with it. Right. And so in real simple terms, a self-directed IRA is you get to utilize the, the money inside the 401k arena or the qual, let me call it qualified plan money and go do different things with that money. You can buy gold, you can buy different assets, you can buy real estate. Now, what I would say though, Jay, is this, and I think where the, the, the really important conversation is, is that when we look at future tax rates, maybe the self-directed IRA is not the best place to, to utilize a real estate deal. Because when we look at real estate, what are the, one, of the, one of the reasons or advantages of real estate is what, Jay? Well, there's lots of benefits. It depends on what you're doing with it. If you are buying and holding it, and if you've sold it on rent to own, then of course you get to take advantage of depreciation and mm -hmm. other tax advantages such as that. Uh, so that's just one big benefit if you're buying and holding. Buying and holding, right? And you also get the, the like you said, the depreciation, but you also get cap, cap gains treatment, right? Now the under current administration, who knows where that's going to go to? That's a whole other conversation. But the, the problem that I potentially see inside a self-directed IRA, it's not that it's bad, but we just have to be aware of if what if you could get that money outside of the self-directed IRA? Now there's tax consequences of that, but see when you buy real estate inside of a self-directed IRA, you're taking a tax advantage asset and moving it into a qualified plan asset. And you're, you're basically just postponing that tax to someday in the future. Now there's all different types of rules and things like that as it relates to the self-directed IRA, but it's something that we should maybe consider thinking about because of the tax ramifications around holding that asset in that self-directed IRA. And so it's not a matter of they're, they're, it, it, they're good or they're bad, or it's just, we have to look at what the overall plan is. And in my opinion, if taxes are going to go up, I want to get as much money taxed. I, I want to pay as much tax as I can today, as crazy as that sounds, because I don't want it to come back to bite me in the future. I want to hold the real estates outside the assets outside of that self-directed IRA. So I have some of the tax benefits. Now, again, we have to look at current tax code. We have to look at what's going on. Like they, current administration could change that. They're talking about moving cap gains rate up to 39.9, 39.6%, right? They're talking about getting rid of the 1031 exchanges. They're talking about doing all these different things. So as it relates to tax strategies and where our money is held, again, it goes back to what I talked to you about is I don't care about what my asset value is. I care about what I can spend. And so those are the conversations that we have to have.